we are looking at applications of the ideal gas law. It's today's lesson. Your lungs hold about four liters of air. When you breathe out, only 500 milliliters of air is actually expelled okay, when you're exhaling. Same amount of air is taken in when you inhale one breath. So, if you uh, one of the new calculations you're gonna have to do is actually calculating density. So going back to grade nine, when we calculated density, density was pretty much um, is a unit, set of units uh, that is, uh, you use your mass and you divide it by whatever the volume is uh, in which the space kind of occupies. Okay, well we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we talked about molar volume in the last lesson. In last lesson. Molar volume of a gas is defined as the space that is occupied by one mole of the gas. And so it's reversed from the molarity, right? So it's liters per mole. So what volume of space is um, being actually occupied by the actual gas? Density of a gas is similar to the density of a solid or a liquid, right? So as I said, you're pretty much um, taking your uh, mass and dividing it by your volume, okay? Uh, common units will be grams per liter for uh, when calculating density. Okay. So molar mass of a gas refers to uh, the mass, which is usually in grams, of one mole of a gas, right? So we've already known, we know that if we've got mass, odds are we need to find the number of moles, right? Um, sometimes you might be asked to find the mass of something, so you maybe have the moles, use the molar mass to help you find the actual mass itself. So, molar mass always expressed in units of grams per mole. So, here we have three sets of units. We've got molar volume, density, molar mass. Okay, so notice the units liters per mole, for molar volume, grams per liter, grams per mole. Um, here's the, uh, the equation, as we said, for density. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Okay, so just a few things to uh, keep in mind when going through some of the, uh, the sample problems that we're going to be looking at today. All gases have the approximate volume of 22.4 uh, liters at STP. Right? So if we're looking at... Um, the, um, at a gas at STP, and you're thinking, well, it hasn't given me volume, but I'm, I'm also given a, a non another unknown that I need to find. Keep in mind that the hint is STP. That's your volume, so your volume will most likely be 22.4 liters. Molecular masses of different gases, however, are all different, which means that each gas has a different density or mass per unit of volume. So even though all gases may have uh, at STP, the same volume, their density is different, right? Remember, uh, to calculate density, mass over volume, and to find mass, if you knew the number of moles, use the molar mass, right? Take that number, divide it by your 22.4 liters, right? And all these gases will be different. And, and uh, we had a chart um, in the last lesson that pretty much went through um, three just random gases, uh, and the one thing that was different, even though they were all you know at the same pressure, uh, same volume, 22.4 uh, liters, the big difference was the density between all these gases. And it's a very important um, property to know about gases. So let's look at the, uh, the first sample problem. Nitrogen makes uh, gas makes up almost 80% of our atmosphere. What is the density of pure nitrogen gas in grams per liter at 12.50 uh, degrees Celsius and 126.63 kilopascals? So what I want you to do is I want you to actually um, isolate what are your givens. Let's look at uh, some of the givens. We've got a pressure, right? Pressure, 126. 0.63 kilopascals. We've got a temperature, 12.50 degrees Celsius, which we want to change to Kelvin, which is equal to 
285.5 Kelvin. So, so far those are two givens. 80%, well, we know that the atmosphere itself has 80% uh, nitrogen, but it's really not going to play any role in this, uh, in this actual question. Now, we've got things to find. N, right, the number of moles, but we can pretty much find that with uh, some of the information that we've got up here, right? We've got R, the constant, which is 8.314 kilopascals, liters over moles of Kelvin. And we're trying to find the volume, but now, here's the hint. Question asks you to find the density of pure nitrogen gas in grams per liter. Right? This grams per liter, how many liters is it referring to? One liter. I'm just going to put a couple extra significant digits in there. Um, liters. Okay. So we've got the following um, sets of units now. To find N, right, we're referring to nitrogen gas. Right? So what bit of information might we want to find about nitrogen gas? Because we're trying to find the grams per liter, right? Because density is equal to mass over volume. So we're ultimately going to need to find the mass. Right, so if we need to find the mass of nitrogen, right, what a bit of information should we have about nitrogen? Molar mass. So the, um, the molar mass of nitrogen, I have it written down here, 28.02 grams per mole. All right, so we're trying to find you know, really, the only unknown is how many moles do we really have? We know a molar mass is that, but we don't know how many moles we actually have of this gas, right, in the atmosphere. So, we have the equation PV equals nRT. So, what we want to do is isolate for, for what? N. So, we isolate for N. And let me use a different color here. N is equal to PV over RT. So let's substitute our numbers. So pressure, 126.63 kilopascals, multiplied by the volume, which is 1.00 liters, over 8.314 kilopascals, liter per mole Kelvin. Like I said, try to use, keep your, um, your units going just to help you with, um, with crossing out and knowing which uh, set of uh, units is the last unit standing, so to speak. Right. And we've got our temperature, which is 285.5 Kelvin. So we go in, cross out kilopascals, liters, Kelvin, last unit remaining is mole. So we know that mole will be the units that we're trying to find. So our N value is equal to, when we multiply all that and divide it, we end up getting 0 0.05334. Moles. Right? So we have the number of moles. We have the molar mass. Right? So between the two, right, we're trying to find the actual mass itself. So the mass itself is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. Right? So let's substitute our numbers. We've got 0 0.053348 moles multiplied by our molar mass, which we found earlier on, 
28.02 grams per mole. Right, moles cancel out. My units are in grams. And I get 1.4948 uh, grams. Right? So we've got our mass, but now question asks the density. Right? But what was the volume that we're referring to? To one. Right? So anything divided by one is one. Right? So let's just throw that in here. So we're going to divide this mass by the volume of one liter. And we know that the density is going to equal to 1.4948 grams per liter. Least number of significant digits in my question is three. Right, ignore that. We don't need to worry about that. So it's 1.49. We look at this number here. It, uh, it doesn't change. Actually, is it three? No, it's four. Four significant digits, sorry. So 1.494, we look at the eight, and the answer for, uh, for density equals 1.495 grams per liter. Okay. So of the atmosphere, um, at that pressure and at that temperature, the actual pressure exerted by, or sorry, the, the actual density of the nitrogen gas uh, in the atmosphere is 1.495 grams per liter. Okay. Next sample problem. A scientist isolates 2.366 grams of a gas. The sample occupies a volume of 800.0 milliliters at 78 degrees Celsius and 103 kilopascals. Use these data uh, to calculate the molar mass of the gas. Is the gas most likely to be bromine, krypton, neon, or fluorine? So, first off, point out the information you, you got. All right, so, what, are, what is your, what you're given? Okay, so extract the numbers that are important. And ultimately, we are trying to find what? What are we trying to find? Because we're being asked to compare it. We're trying to find molar mass, ultimately. So we need to find the molar mass of this gas. We don't know what the gas is. But based on that molar mass, we can figure out the molar mass of all these other gases. Bromine, krypton, neon, and fluorine. Now, keep in mind something I, I explained to you guys back in the uh, chemical reactions, right? In the balancing of equations. Something I uh, pointed out last year um, during the chemistry component. Bromine. If we're referring to bromine in a chemical reaction, what is, what is the formula for bromine? And now, the other one to also keep in mind is bromine and fluorine only. Hmm? They're diatomic. So when you're trying to find the molar masses of these four gases, keep in mind that bromine, we're not just going to write Br, we're going to write Br2. When we're trying to find fluorine here, we're not just writing F, but F2. And neon and krypton, they're not part of the diatomics. So we don't have to worry about those. Those are just fine, whatever the molar mass is of those ones. Okay, so take a moment and see if you can uh, formulate an answer from here. Givens, pressure, 103. Uh, kilopascals, our volume, 800.0 milliliters. The mass of this gas that was isolated was 2.366 uh, grams. Uh, our R, our constant, 8.314. Our temperature, 78 degrees Celsius. And which, in fact, we're going to have to, uh, to convert. So there are a couple of things we're going to need to convert. So our temperature, we know, uh, 78 degree, uh, degrees Celsius to Kelvin works out to 351 Kelvin. The other set of units that need to be converted are what? Volume, right? Because we always want 
our volume in liters. And, and here's the hint. If you look at your constant, notice how your constant includes liters. So make sure that your volume right, are going to be also in liters. So our volume is 8 .0 0 0.8 liters, but we've gone four significant digits. So try to keep the four significant digits running in your... Um, uh, in your steps. You don't have to. It's not going to really make any difference in your final answer, but you just don't want to mistake in the, um, the number of significant digits into thinking that, oh, I've only got one now. Okay. So, we've got the equation PV is equal to NRT. So, what are we trying to find? N. N, right? The number of moles. So, we want to isolate for N because once we find N, We've got the mass, right? We've got the mass. What are we going to do between these? The, N, the, M, the mass of them? We're going to divide, right? To find what? What are we going to find? The molar mass. And then we're going to compare the molar mass that we find with the molar mass we'll be able to find of. So it, this is going to take all this extra work unless you happen to find the right one, right? So if you're working out bromine and that happens to be you know, the molar mass that you need, well, then you're in luck, then you didn't have to calculate the other ones. So, we, uh, we're we going to isolate for N. Just a different color here. So, N is equal to PV over RT. So, our pressure, 103 kilopascals multiplied by our volume, which is 0. 0.8. 8,000 liters divided by 8.314 uh, kilopascals per liter per mole Kelvin multiplied by our temperature, which is 351 Kelvin. So we start canceling out. We know what units we should have here at the end, right? And that's moles. So when we uh, multiply all that together, we should get a number of moles of 0 0.028236 and a whole bunch of others. Okay, so there's our the number of moles. We've got the number of moles. We've got the mass. So we can use those to find the actual molar mass of, um, of this gas. So we've got the end value, 0 0.028236 moles. We're going to divide it by the mass here, 2 point, uh, oops, nope, the other way around, sorry. Two point three six six grams divided by zero point zero two eight two three six moles. So we take the two numbers, divide them together, and we get eighty three point seven nine grams per mole. So we we need to find the actual molar mass question. Uh, least number of significant digits is 3, so the 83.7 becomes 83.8 grams per mole. So we've got the molar mass of this unknown gas right? that this uh, scientist has isolated. Now, what we need to do is we need to find the molar mass of the four to figure out is it bromine, krypton, neon, or fluorine. So we need to find the molar mass of bromine, molar mass of krypton, molar mass of neon, and the molar mass of fluorine, right? So it's really important that you were able to isolate or, or figure out that you needed to know about the diatomics and remember the diatomics because otherwise we would have just found the molar mass of just one bromine and one fluorine. So let me give you the calculations. 
So bromine would have given you 141.8 grams per mole. If you found the molar mass of krypton, you would have gotten 83.8 grams per mole. So right away we would have found it on our second attempt. So just for argument's sake, molar mass of neon, 20.2 grams per mole. And lastly, fluorine, 38.0 grams per mole. So we wanted to also make sure that none of the others actually came out to that. Um, and so right away we know what is the, uh, the unknown gas. It was krypton because both of these numbers match up, okay? Okay, next sample problem. I'm actually gonna go through this one with you. Um, nice long one, but it actually, we actually go back to some of the um, older lessons, all right? So let's look at the question first to figure out what it, what it is from the, uh, the previous um, lessons that um, we're actually needing to go back to. As geologists study the area where an ancient marsh was located, they discover an unknown gas seeping from the ground. They collect the sample of the gas and take it to a lab for analysis. Lab technicians find that the gas is made up of 80.0% carbon, 20% hydrogen. They also find that 4.60 grams of the sample occupies a volume of 2.50 liters at 1.50 atmospheres, and it's at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the molecular formula of the gas? So right now, we know that this gas is made up of carbon and hydrogen. We need to find the, the actual uh, molecular formula. We need to find out what those numbers are going to be. But we know that 80% of it is carbon. The remaining 20% is actually hydrogen. So let's um, look at some of the, uh, the givens. Pressure, 1.50 atmospheres. Volume, 2.50 liters. Mass of the, um, the gas that was actually uh, collected, 4.60 grams. R is 8.314 kilopascals liter per mole per Kelvin, and our temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So, few things that we need to calculate. Um, few problems should come to mind. What are they when looking at these givens? The pressure. Notice the pressure here. Pressures in atmospheres, but are given are in kilopascals. Okay. Um, and so pretty much that's really the most important one to, that you're going to need to uh, to change. So we have one of two options. We can change the atmospheres right, into uh, kilopascals. So we can just keep this constant. Or we can change the constant. And the last lesson I, I was saying that um, you want to change, you can change the, the R. I usually change the R uh, value uh, instead of changing my, um, my pressure, but that's up to you. Uh, the calculations I'm going to show you actually are uh, where I calculate. Uh, I change my R value to include atmospheres. Okay, so let's look at, um, let's do that first. So we've got 8.314 kilopascals per liter over moles of Kelvin. That's really what that means, that number means, where the moles and the Kelvin units are in the denominator of this question. Now, I want to get rid of kilopascals. Where am I going to place kilopascals as a factor labeling? Pardon? In the denominator. That's where it's going to cancel it out. So that's going to do that. Now, we've um, gotten rid of kilopascals. What are we going to change kilopascals to? Atmospheres, right? That's really... Now, anyone remember 
what the uh, the actual conversion is. 101.3 what? So what, where, where are we going to put the 101.3? In the kilopascals, yeah. 101.3 kilopascals. 101.3 kilopascals is equivalent to how many atmospheres? One. One atmosphere. So in fact, we're multiplying it by one. It's not going to make any difference. Right, so in fact, it's 8.314 divided by 101.3. So when we divide those two together, let me uh, clear that and put the actual new R value. The new R value is 0 0.08207 atmospheres per liter moles of Kelvin. Okay, so this is my new R value. Okay, it's my new R value. Now, we're going to put the idea of the gases aside for now. Right? Because ultimately, what are we really trying to find here? The wood value. Think, if we think now of the gas law, the, uh, the actual ideal gas law. We've got PV equals NRT. What are we going to try to find? Moles, right? So we want to try to find moles. But first, what we're going to do is kind of go back to how to calculate empirical formula, right? We know that uh, 80.0% is actually carbon. Hydrogen, 20.0%. So we always look at, now going back to trying to find the, the actual empirical form, we always assume a 100 gram sample, right? Because together, we form 100%. So we always assume it to 100 grams then. Right? To a 100 gram sample. So how many grams would we say if we had a 100 gram sample would be of carbon? 80 grams. Right? So we'll keep the significant digits going. 80.0 grams. And how many uh, grams will be of hydrogen? 20.0 grams. Okay? So we've got now the mass. What do you think we could find now of carbon and of hydrogen? For those who remember how to calculate empirical formula. We've got mass. The molar mass, right? So we're going to find the molar mass. Right, so we've got carbon, and we've got hydrogen. So in this sample, right, in this sample, right, using the 80%, this is a hypothetical. We really don't have 100 grams of a sample, but we use that to help us find the empirical and ultimately our molecular formula. So we've got hypothetically 80.0 grams of carbon, and we've got 20.0 grams of hydrogen. So we're going to find the actual molar mass of carbon and of hydrogen. Molar mass of carbon, 12.01 grams per mole. Okay. And molar mass of hydrogen, 1.01 grams per mole. Right. So divide them. So what, we, what do we have here? The dreaded 6.66 moles is actually going to be carbon. And hydrogen comes out to 19.8 moles. So we've got this. We've got the number of moles. right? And this is what we end up doing to go back to. So of carbon and of hydrogen, we've got... Uh, 6.66 moles of hydrogen. We've got 19.8 moles of hydrogen. So what we always want to do to find the empirical formula, we divide by the lowest mole value, right? which is 6.66. Okay. So how many carbons in this empirical formula? One, right? which we usually don't put the one, but it's 
there. How many hydrogens? It's about three, because I think it comes out to 2.97, right? So because of this value, because of this decimal value, we actually can round it off. Remember, don't round it off. Remember there was a chart I gave you guys um, mathematically? So please make sure you remember the, um, the actual values and which ones you can actually do. If it's between 0 0.95 to 2.99, you can round it off to the, uh, the nearest whole number. So the empirical formula is CH3. Okay, so let's get rid of uh, all this. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of it. I'll put back my R value uh, in my equation. So remember, as we said, PV equals NRT, actually, Let's just put the empirical formula here off to the side. So we want to try to find now the number of moles um, in this sample. So we've got N is equal to PV over RT. Remember that my new R value uh, was 0 0.08207. And now it's atmospheres, liters per mole of Kelvin. Okay, so we're going to substitute... Uh, our numbers, and we can keep our pressure as the uh, 1.50. So we've got 1.50 atmospheres multiplied by my volume, which is 2.50 liters. We're going to divide it by my new R value, 0 0.08207 atmospheres per liter mole Kelvin. And we're going to multiply it by our temperature, which actually we haven't. Well, we did. We did calculate it, right? No, we didn't. What was the other one? 298 Kelvin. Okay. So now let's look at what gets crossed out: atmospheres, liters, Kelvin. Last unit standing are moles. So now the sample we've gone here. The number of moles, or our n value, is 0 0.15333 moles. So this is the uh, the number of moles that we have for this actual sample. Right? We know the formula, the empirical formula, is CH3. We have the mass. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the actual molar mass. Molar mass is um, equal to the mass divided by the number of moles. So the mass, 4.60 grams, divided by our number of moles that we just calculated. So the molar mass that we found is 30.0 grams mole. Now, what we want to do is we want to find the actual ratio between this molar mass okay, and the molar mass of our empirical formula. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to find the molar mass of CH3, right, and, but we've got the molar mass of the actual, the actual molecular formula of this actual gas, right, which is 30.0 grams per mole. So I want to find this. Can I find that? Yes. Right. So pretty much find the uh, molar mass of carbon, the three hydrogens, and we get 15.04 grams per mole. So we want to find the ratio. Right? We want to find, what am I going to take um, CH3, what am I going to multiply it by to figure out what the actual molecular formula is? So what do you think I'm going to do with these two? These two numbers. Hmm? Divide them, right? So which order, though? I can't just divide them the way they are, because I'm going to get now a decimal value. Right? 30 divided, I'm going to switch them around because I can't get, 
Remember, the smallest that this formula can be is what? CH3. Right? If I had a half, right, if I divided these the way it is, right, 15.04, and I divided it by 30, I'd get 0.5. So 0.5, I can't get less, a smaller formula than this. This is the smallest that my formula can be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch those two around. 30.0 grams per mole over 15.04 grams per mole, which is equal to, I got 1.99, but 1.99 can be uh, simplified to, to a whole number of 2, which means CH3 is going to be multiplied by, by 2. So what is the formula of this gas? C2H6. So the actual molecular formula is C2H6. Remember the more molecular formula and the empirical formula is thus is the lowest coefficient that we could possibly get. Okay.